the uh, QB you need to know. So basically, you you need to know how how many atoms in each unit. What's the relation between A and R, and what's the atomic packing factor, and how to calculate this? Okay. Uh, move on. Um, we need to define. We need to know how to define a vector or a plane in a qubit. So that's the way how we draw a directional index or direction index. So you, I think this is pretty simple. You guys can do it, but just make sure um, you guys when you guys need to draw this, you need to label the axis because some guys complain that I take points off from the quiz one because it's really hard. Um, some somebody want to define axis like this is x. No. This is x, this is y, this is z. But somebody want to do it differently, y, s, z. So you need to label this and you need to label intercept because if you just draw a plane here, if this is one third, uh, one half, this is one third, it's hard for me to tell from the drawing itself. So remember to label the x on x and the intercept. Okay, and the Miller index, um, it's just a little bit different from the directional index. So you first determine the intercept. You guys need to how to do this. This will be in the exam. So and then you find the reciprocal of this intercept, and then you make make them to be the integer. That's how you do it. And reversely, um. You can do this reversely if you have a Miller index to draw a plan, you can do this too. But um, in the quiz, in the quiz, the second questions, there are actually like two planes. Because um, uh, so for one Miller index, you can represent like several parallel planes. And so what happened in the problem two of the quiz, there are two planes in the single uh, in one qubit. So both answers will be correct. Um, uh, so you can do it either way. And then, um, as I said, there's like one, uh, there's like several, like uh, parallel planes. So this d value just tells you what's the distance between like the uh, adjacent planes with the same Miller index. Okay. So, you guys have any question about the Miller index and the directional index? Okay. Okay, now uh, the next one is the X-ray depression. So uh, they use the X-ray to detect what's the uh, cubic height uh, of the material. So here, from here, these slides, you need to know uh, what's the relationship between the um, wavelength of the light, uh, the angle, and the uh, D, the space between things. Because uh, once we get a D, mm -hmm. we can get the A from the uh, get get these A numbers from the this equation. Mm -hmm. Guys, have any questions about this? Okay. So um, I don't think you need to know how how to get this number, but just you guys need to know like uh. Lambda means the wavelength of the light. What's D and what's theta? Um, will we will we always assume that n equals one? Uh, if it's not, the question will uh, tell you. Okay. Okay. We tell you what this is the second order, this is third order. But normally in this uh, in the class, always is like first order. Okay. Okay. So that's the quiz question. Uh, question from the quiz. So um, you have this Miller index. The main thing you do is just take the reciprocal of these numbers, and that's the intercept. And then you draw the plane. Uh, you get, uh, and then you draw the plane. So any question about this? The solutions are up for these, right? Yeah. OK. So you can just uh, yes. those. So here it go. So make sure. Um, so 
some for the for the second part, there's a left here. So you have to draw this plane in a tube. You don't so don't do something like you draw a cubic here. Uh, how to draw a cubic? It's difficult. <laughs> I'm bad at drawing. So somebody would draw a cubic like this, and then they pull a thing here, and then draw that plane like this. Don't do that. Just draw the cubic to this plane. OK. You, you guys understand this? Because I used to see the thing in the cubic, not just the plane. <laughs> what, if I do the, what if I do the cube like, under like, the axis? Yeah, so this is not a correct answer, this is a wrong answer. So you have to draw this plane in the cube, so you just move the whole cube down here. Yeah, that's right. Just, so which means you just set this point to be your original axis. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think like 99% of people get this question right. So, um, so in the exam, you will have uh, more than enough time. So you need to be careful. Keep, some people will do something like uh, B equals to A divided by those things. When they calculate A, you just move those things times B. But sometimes, I don't know why people do B divided by that thing to get an A. So, that's, so just be careful about this small point. Because you can see, um, this answer itself is like both ten points, so it, it will. So this ruby will like pretty much the same when I grade the exam. So you guys need to be careful. Okay, that's the third question. So the main difficulty here is, uh, you know that a equals to two r in this cubic. Once. Once you get this, you get the second thing is how many unit, uh, how many atoms in a unit cell. So for the simple qubits, um, it's uh, so they have like uh, atoms on each corner. So it's one a times a. So one atoms in each qubit cell, and then you just carry the volume, and then you get the APF. And this just like practice in your homework. So draw the direction vectors in the unit cell. So for this, I think, um, I see your homework is like most people would get this right. So do you want me to do it or no? And if you have two points, because uh, you need to uh, get the directions. How do you get the directions from like two these two points? You just like subtract one point from the other. That's how you get the directions here. So that's this second question here. Okay, any problems about like chapter three? Yeah. Okay. So just a recap. So uh, chapter three, you you need to know the uh, characteristics of about the four Q, uh, QB cells, the simple QB cells, PCC, FCC, and HCP, and then you need to how you need to know how to draw directional index, or maybe the other way around. They give you a directional index. You need to tell like uh, you have to draw this on the bigger and the Miller index, and also uh, the X-ray. Okay, and chapter five is another very uh, important chapter. But for this chapter, it's more like, uh, you guys take reaction for kinetics and diffusion. That's more like uh, chemical, uh, chemical reactions. So here, um, so for ev every reactions, they have um, 
excavational energy. So although the reaction might, might release energy, you first need to keep the energies letting happen. So that's the excavation energy. So, um, and this just shows the probability of the higher energy atoms compared to the original state. So just write down the equation. So um, this is a probability function. It's very common in chemical engineering class. And you will see like all the equations uh, follow this like nearly the same, same shape. Okay, so for this one, just uh, you just need to know the number of the molecule greater than energy, this energy. It's still a probability if you guys, uh, if you guys can see it. So this is the number divided by the total number. Uh, normally for the C, you can assume C equals to one if it didn't tell you what's the value of the C or you can just leave it there. So um, for this, um, so as you know for our uh, reactions, it depends on energy. If the en uh, depends on the energy and the energy depends on the temperature, if you have higher temperature, you have like more thermal energies, so molecules will move fast. That's increase the reaction rate. So uh, that's that's the original of this equation here. So uh, for for these equations, you can see if you take log on each side, you can get this uh, a, a straight line here. And another thing is uh, diffusions. So in uh, in chemical engineering, diffusion is very important concept. It, it, it shows like how fast. Uh, so suppose I'm here and I need to walk to that door. So I can just walk straight. That's a process called convection. So which means I have a directionally move. But uh, in diffusion, it's not this concept. So diffusion is a random process. Means Suppose I want to walk to that door, but I don't have any directional concept. So I can walk this way, walk this way, walk this way. So at I, when I walk each step, I have the same choice to walk like different directions. So this time would be like much longer than I just go straight to the door. So that's the concept between diffusions and uh, directional movement to the door. So you can see uh, here, this diffusion is, uh, is described by the diffusion coefficient, which the unit is uh, meter squared divided by uh, S. So it's not a simple just uh, velocity, but it's, it's kind of like two-dimensional di two velocity. So you are not choosing just uh, between two points, you are choosing direction from the Okay, so this equation just like let's do let's do the last depends on the diffusion coefficient and like what's the concentration difference. So if there are higher concentration difference, uh, this process will happen like faster and the length and the length of like so suppose I want to diffuse from here to the top compared to I want to diffuse from here to the next building, that's a different process. So that's how uh, this big first law uh, describes the diffusion. So basically, just like write down these equations, uh, knowing that uh, what each term means. Okay. So as I said, um, the diffusion coefficient is depends on the temperature. Here it's still the same equations as you guys might know. It's still, yeah, um, 